let me start with the uh, content. So the uh, idea here is to give uh, application view uh, of uh, electric vehicle uh, for the electric uh, drive design. Uh, so we, uh, the application here is uh, traction uh, or the electric vehicle. So how uh, the conventional uh, machine design or conventional inverter uh, that, that is electric drive uh, how it will change, how it will, how it affects. So there, these are the uh, generic uh, contents covering various aspects like sizing, thermal consideration, harmonics, uh, some trends uh, in the industry and uh, vibration, some mechanical issues. So uh, the content by and large cover various aspects uh, and we will uh, go through the first aspect that is the uh, we call this is a requirement. So the first requirement for any say vehicle uh, is the torque speed curve. So uh, our existing IC engine and the transmission that is here uh, show that we have that gives us a typical performance. Uh, so the um, the the on on your left hand side you can see the engine. Uh, curve and then with gear you can see the torque speed curve uh, with the gears so the thing is is uh, electric drive is very much close to this uh, kind of a requirement and uh, the that is one of the reason uh, that uh, it goes very well uh, naturally with the uh, requirement for the traction applications so we get a uh, uh, the very good torque uh, at the beginning and then the torque drops, uh, but we get the power. So this is ideal uh, torque speed curve, but uh, the nature or the behavior that we expect for the machine is almost uh, what the IC and gear can do. So uh, this, this is where we say that, uh, okay, th this may be a good alternative for the uh, IC engine. Uh, the another aspect is uh, efficiency. So uh, we we the traction requires a different drive cycle. So we have uh, say very uh, say city drive or a highway drive, aggressive drive, uh, urban drive, rural drive. So these different uh, cycles uh, demands uh, different torque and speed curves and their operation, uh, the frequency or, or the, we call this as a heat map where mostly the vehicle will be operating in those different cycles are plotted here. And that, that becomes uh, in for designing the electric drive. So you can see the <clears throat> efficiency requirement varies and the uh, operating point, these dots that if you see here, those are the operating points will be different for uh, on this uh, on this torque speed curve so if i plot those uh, consider some three to four drive cycles like this and plot those uh, couple of cycles here so you can see uh, the operation uh, of this particular cycle that is in red in color is more across the torque speed curve but you can see the blue one is concentrated more on the high torque zone, low speed. So this this um, actually gives us a lot of insight to design electric drive, where we should be uh, designing in which area, where we should focus, which part of our operation uh, should give most of the most efficient part because it's very difficult to um, give uh, the maximum efficiency at all torque speed points. So we have to see, uh, we have to see where the uh, most of the time machine or traction demands operation of machine and there we can uh, try to optimize it. So this is very good uh, uh, requirement that uh, traction specify to any electric drive uh, design engineer. The another requirement coming from the uh, say uh, Department of Energy. Uh, this is a regulatory, or this is a, uh, the one of the bodies that they 
they they drive the uh, development and research so you can see uh, we are almost in 2020 here so these are the years uh, this is a drive system complete electric drive this is a power electronics mainly the inverter and this is the motor and these are the key driving elements at a very high level that is dollar per kilowatt kilowatt so these are the densities uh, and volumetric uh, density kilowatt per liter and efficiency so the doe department of uh, energy uh, see that uh, this target how we move towards this target and uh, now already we are in uh, 2020 and we are very much close to these numbers <clears throat> or already we have surpassed in few areas so in case of inverters we are uh, well above this number and uh, the next uh, uh, targets are being um, will be set up soon by the doe uh, but in terms of cost it's still not uh, it's still not we are there we, we are still uh, struggling to get to these numbers close to these numbers so this is very good uh, say i can reference chart where you can see where your design stands and where you want to move forward and there are some research areas mentioned here uh, which uh, you can go through later on so these are the some of the uh, key areas that they have mentioned here the cost wise so the another element is where where is the most of the cost coming from so the magnets in a permanent magnet machine uh, is uh, is coming from the magnets which is 53 percent close to and uh, this is the i mean this uh, is the target that uh, 2020 wants to go to the 4.7 dollar per kilowatt and this is the uh, sort of a, uh, say existing state uh, which is a, a year before but this is almost uh, pretty same now also and this is for the inverter uh, and put together power electronics uh, the inverter converter transmission uh, you can see uh, we still have this a uh, lot of cost coming from the inverter side and uh, the transmission is also playing a big role uh, whereas uh, the machine is something close to 20 percent uh, and uh, these days this transmission cost is also going down so just to put some reference uh, this is from delphi one of the presentations that delphi put together for department of energy is this is what they have achieved so far in terms of densities and in terms of cost. So they are claiming that their cost is much uh, close to what DOE has specified. So this is their claim um, and we have to check this uh, in reality. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the this, this indicates just, I mean, this is just to indicate that we are moving in the right direction. The whole industry is moving towards that. Other consideration for electric drive is uh, the uh, what kind of uh, uh, voltage and current available from the battery so there is a big constraint uh, we have to consider that uh, what kind of uh, power and energy is available uh, because battery is a balance or trade-off between energy and power so uh, we have to uh, consider what kind of a peak current, what kind of a continuous current we can draw from the battery and what we can deliver with that uh, from the machine or from the inverter. The other constraint is also coming from uh, the switching uh, uh, strategy that we have. So we may have different uh, switching strategies that uh, introduce harmonics or that, that reduces harmonics and uh, those uh, uh, switching strategies impact uh, us so we should be very much uh, having a know-how of what inverter team is doing what inverter people are trying to do what kind of harmonics they are introducing what kind of efficiencies they are talking about so the available from battery and the switching strategy is what majority of the time uh, forms the design space for the electric drive. So the sizing part, so let's say we know the constraints, we know the environment where we know the application well now. Coming to the sizing or uh, scaling part, uh, we know that uh, this uh, torque is 
proportional to the d square l so this is the by and large what we see uh, well accepted analytical form uh, the, the the most uh, say attractive thing is the length of the machine and that is where most of the uh, say electric machine manufacturer plays uh, with it and gives different different powers uh, and different different torque uh, that that is a uh, one key uh, element uh, but the thing is when we increase the length uh, essentially power may not be linearly increasing so we 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 have to look at the uh, losses and the efficiency as we keep on increasing the length and then we once we hit that limit uh, we have to look at the what kind of uh, uh, current and voltages that uh, we have uh, from the battery so more voltage is more power more current is more torque so something we have to see where we have to strike balance up to what limit we can give torque uh, what kind of a length and diameters we can play so the time diameter also plays key role so as we keep on increasing diameter we have more benefits but that benefits comes with it because this is in 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 square term but that comes with a little bit of little bit of uh, uh, know the money so the tooling uh, cost uh, increases um, as we because our uh, the stamping the diameter all the <clears throat> parameters uh, increases new tooling uh, whereas the length increments uh, needs less investment so the uh, cost versus design is, is where we have trade-off here the key thing is uh, we have to keep the design uh, as far as possible modular or stable. if i want to get uh, say 100 kilowatt uh, is it possible to get 150 kilowatt or 120 kilowatt by increasing some length uh, or by doing some better cooling so the uh, modularity is a key in industry uh, where the same platform of machine um, or the lamination can be used for various vehicles so that that gives huge huge cost benefits uh, to the uh, oem the uh, the other side of it is the uh, the uh, the application i mean the other side of application is when it vehicle moves there are different uh, loads coming on the electric machine so that also we have to meet, uh, not just the uh, drive cycles, but uh, there are uh, the elements like uh, the climb uphill or uh, start on hill. There are many other uh, situations uh, where we have to uh, size the machine uh, to address those requirements. So the uh, <clears throat> requirements those form for typical uh, conventional vehicle will also be applicable here but from machine perspective we have to see we have enough current we have enough voltage we can deliver it uh, to the maximum speed required uh, that that vehicle has to attain and uh, the uh, all the starting conditions all the uh, all the gradients that it has to um, go through so those those are depicted here in the chart this is just a reference chart where we try to plot different different uh, conditions and make sure that our torque speed curve of machine satisfies the uh, different uh, requirements the uh, there is a peak requirement there is a continuous requirement so both conditions we have to uh, put here and that is where you can see uh, the electric machine torque speed curve is for peak as well as continuous uh, in this uh, chart the another consideration is uh, what kind of a machine we should select whether it should be high torque or low torque high power or low power and uh, you can see here it's a two typical machine where uh, the power of these two machines are same let us say that they they are having the same power and uh, you can see which machine now we should select whether um, they are having say 50 kilowatt 50 kilowatt but you see here the uh, uh, the volume uh, of p uh, would be much uh, lesser uh, here in this case so uh, it is again the space availability what kind of a requirement we have to meet 
those considerations will go uh, when we select such kind of a, or design any kind of electric drive. Kind of. So you see here uh, different uh, machines are designed from uh, various power, so 44 kilowatt. Uh, but this particular RAID, uh, uh, say, uh, performance, you can see it has low torque, but uh, it sustains that torque for much higher speed and then it starts dropping. Whereas this blue color is at low speed itself will start dropping. And that is a 44 kilowatt machine. And it's very high torque here. So which one to select? So there may be another criteria to select this is acceleration, because this is where we, we have to look into this, uh, whether you need a sustained, more sustained torque for higher speeds. Uh, that will give us a very quick acceleration. So you can see the red, uh, the top red is what the machine of 80 kilo that I, I will discuss. And something this uh, 50 kilowatt uh, or 44 kilowatt is much uh, lower in this. Uh, so it may give very good uh, instant torque, but it is not able to sustain it. So you see here the acceleration versus speed is something we should always be looking at. So uh, the selection of uh, machine or design of machine, uh, say govern these kind of uh, uh, parameters uh, from the vehicle side. The another thing is the transmission, which where this machine is connected. So if we have a two speed transmission, uh, then you can see here the green part of this uh, torque speed curve is catered. Whereas if, we if, uh, if we have a single gear, a single uh, speed transmission, maybe we can do this, uh, uh, the whatever the orange part, but not the green part. And also at high speed, you can see the second speed transmission is giving me a much higher, much, much higher benefit to increase the vehicle speed. So the, gearing and machine goes hand in hand. So uh, what kind of a ratios we should have there? So typically say nine, 10, uh, these are the typical ratios that we have uh, for the first gear and second gear we may, uh, so there may be multiple gears. So there are a lot of discussions going on on, on multiple uh, transmission, multiple gear transmission systems. Uh, which gives much much better uh, lower the size of the machine and gives better performance but uh, on the contrary we have some challenges with the uh, transmission as well uh, when it is a multi multiple transmission system so there are th this is another trade-off uh, that we have to uh, study uh, when we design machine uh, then uh, the another element element to consider for machine design is what kind of a VDC or DC bus voltage we have and how we are getting that. Many architectures, uh, high voltage architectures got a boost uh, circuit uh, that is a bi-directional DC-DC boost converter. Uh, that, that, that may not be necessarily uh, each OEM has or got. So uh, like for example, Price introduced this. Uh, so that that drastically reduces the battery terminal voltage uh, that to say 200 volt and then uh, we can still have VDC at 500 volt that voltage is going to impact us on electric drive when we design electric drive because that that 500 volt that means I can have a much higher back EMF uh, so I can run at very high speed and I can have different characterization or different character torque speed characteristics of electric machine. So uh, this is another important consideration. What kind of architecture uh, we have in place uh, for electric machine design? So coming to the electric machine as such now. Um, so we we know our environment now very much uh, well. Now we we are conversant with what what parameters are uh, driving uh, the electric machine design or say inverter design. So mostly you, uh, we will see induction and uh, interior permanent magnet machines. Uh, these are predominantly, I won't say uh, 
those are the only machines but those are the uh, dominated uh, machines that is being used uh, because of their robustness maybe uh, we have put a lot of research in that area but there is another uh, consideration going on because you remember that uh, uh, magnet cost is uh, almost close to 40 percent 45 percent of total uh, machine cost so there is a wound synchronous machine that is coming up uh, which is uh, shaping up or um, there are other different uh, machine topologies where uh, less amount of permanent magnet is used or ferrite is used uh, so less uh, rare earth free permanent magnet machines or um, electric machines are being uh, researched and uh, different winding topologies are also being studied along with that uh, we, we can see here uh, these are the different uh, even the SRM machine is also in uh, in place, uh, um, and we can see different windings that um, here in the bottom also drives those design. Uh, the hub motor, uh, which is uh, I think, uh, is also in consideration, and uh, the that is called outer rotor permanent magnet machines. Uh, they are still um, we don't con as an industry we we are still not considering that as a mature solution. We see a lot of development happening, a lot of claims are being made and a lot of vehicles are being developed there but there is no mass deployment uh, as of now with these machines so far uh, in the at, at least in the four-wheeler and the uh, bigger say commercial vehicles mm -hmm.